Hi there, this is Shane O'Brien McDonald from Japan in 100 Dishes, and this is one of our bonus episodes. It's bonus episode number nine about hotel buffets. And again, it's most important that you probably want to take a look at episode 14 in the other list there from about, it basically it's about hotel buffets, oh, namely hotel breakfast buffets. So this is something that's a little bit different than what you might be expecting. I mean, it's a little bit different in Japan. And so I just don't want anybody to get too shocked. One of the things you need to know about hotels in Japan is that overwhelmingly, breakfast is included when you stay there and it's usually a pretty good breakfast a lot of the things about going to these far-off places in the countryside is that you get to visit and sample local cuisines namely fish especially seafoods that aren't available in Tokyo or Osaka or Nagoya and that's a big big highlight about these sorts of places so basically what I did I, I, I don't want to go through this the less than impressive hotel buffets I've been through there are lots of them they don't tend to advertise and give a lot of pictures these ones hotel Hotels are relatively high, not high end, but decently decent hotels. They're not business hotels, so they're basically a step above. So probably $150, uh, anywhere from $100 to $200 a night, including breakfast. And the idea behind this, as I mentioned before, also in the episode 26 about the real cons, the idea is that you have breakfast ready for you when you leave your room. You're going to leave by 10 o'clock because they don't, they don't, they'll call you if you say don't, do not disturb. And uh, basically you'll start your day and then you go and you tour whatever local attractions are available, art museums. Museums, Japanese gardens, famous views, and so this is just a good way to probably avoid having to buy a huge lunch, you know, because there's so much foods on for sale. Now the first hotel I found here is, uh, this is a hotel, a Sakurai, and it is in Guma. Now Guma, I'm just going to put on my little mouse pointer here, Guma is just north of Tokyo. And it's in, uh, this is in a place called Kusatsu Onsen. It is a place where, basically, Tokyo is this area here uh, where there's 40 million people or so. Saitama is a place where a lot of people live north of the city. It's a huge suburb. But as you continue outwards, the next place north is Guma. Now, Maibashi is the main city there, and there's also Isasaki. Those are the main cities in Guma. But nobody's really commuting from Guma to central Tokyo because it would take hours. It would take an hour and a half to two hours by local train. Even... I did have a gentleman in one of my English teaching classes years ago who came from Kumagaya all the way to central Tokyo, but he took the bullet train. <laughs> um, I guess they paid for it. Uh, Kumagaya and the lower, lower like the uh, like lower lowlands, shall we say, of this area are very famous for being extremely hot in the summertime. Kumagaya regularly tops 40 degrees in the, in August or late July or mid, up to mid-August. However, this hotel is in a place called Kusatsu. And and it's more in the mountains here. So it's basically in this mountain area. It's uh, famous for Kusatsu Onsen. And it's where a lot of people go because there's this, the, see, there's all these mountains. Well, these are volcanic mountains. And I think at one point, one of them actually exploded, which is, was not nice for the people that were there because they probably passed away. But here, there's lots of great onsens and places you can visit. And, the, and uh, it's accessible through the Shinkansen, the Nagano Shinkansen. Now, this hotel is is in, uh, in Kusatsu, and it has a fantastic breakfast. But what it's interesting about this particular hotel's webpage, it actually gives you instructions, points, on recommendations for a healthy breakfast. Again, that's the foot it first says here. Health, it, basically something aimed at your health. It's a health, they have it in both in Japanese and in katakana. And they've got some pictures here. Now, one of the things you're going to notice about Japanese breakfast is that it has a lot of things you don't usually get for breakfast. Namely, soba. Look at this. Little bowls of soba noodles. They're going to have hot soba soup and some green onion. Uh, they're the gray noodles made of buckwheat. Oranges, that's okay. This looks like it's some sort of, I don't know, peach concoction. Probably sweet. But they also have a salad bar, which is standard, okay? That's a standard thing, a salad bar for breakfast. Also up here, this in, this place is interesting because it has like, a, I think it has an oatmeal kind of thing going on with the oatmeal rice bowl. It's not oatmeal, it's not rice. It's like watery oatmeal, also called okayu. Uh, they usually have a selection of baked goods and, and this one might have French toast, but also they have honey. And it even says here, this is like straight from, cut from the uh, from the beehive, honey that you can try and you put it in yogurt or put it on toast. Uh, they have a, they're gonna have a chef there that's gonna be making French toast for you. They also have okayu with a umesh, like a basically watery rice and regular rice. And they offer curry. They also offer tofu dishes, like tofu with the tofu milk selection of like bagel, well not a bagel, but croissants and breads and danishes and dinner rolls. Dinner rolls are always there. You never find them in a Japanese bakery. You will always find dinner rolls in a breakfast buffet for whatever reason. These women are dressed in their summer 
yukatas. Uh, not a kimono. Interesting point here. This is not a kimono. Kimonos are usually worn in the wintertime. They take like two hours to put on. They're for special occasions. They have fur, they have ropes, they have all this business. These are yukatas. And these are the things like, now they, they vary from something you get in your hotel room just to wear to the bath. So you're not like, you know, looking funny. You have some like, it's almost like a robe. These ones have an obi, like a band. So these are more like uh, girls dressing up to go to summer, spring festivals. They are usually of a much more, they're a uh, pattern fabric, one layer, and that's about it. And they're much lighter. Uh, wearing a kimono in the summer heat is inconceivable for Japanese women as well. You know, it's more of a thing you wear in January. Or maybe too, they have special ones for weddings, like in that James Bond movie where they look like a mushroom. And maybe if you, or drawing restraint nine with um, Bjork when she's on that ship. Also, they talk about milk and gyudon and soup. This is a big thing, vegetable soup, black beans and homemade jam. You know, it's one of the things that you're gonna see in this hotel. Another hotel here, um, this one is the Tendo Hotel. Now, Tendo is in Yamagata Prefecture. Now, that's way, way further north of Tokyo. Now, this is where you really are going on a special trip. It's way up here. Oh my goodness, almost at the edges of the map. And it's a small city off the Tohoku Shinkansen. So again, it's kind of in the middle of places. Sendai has about a million people, but even so, uh, it is definitely far away. Even if you're, you know, you see, it's just outside of Yamagata City, you know. So again, this is the kind of place where you go to relax and watch the countryside far from Tokyo. This is interesting, this website, because again, here we go. This has two chefs in the <laughs> on staff. So they're not just there in the back room bringing out dishes. They actually make a la carte egg dishes. And for this one, why I liked this restaurant, or this particular web page, is that they literally break down for you all the different things you can have for lunch, for breakfast. So you've got your basics here. So you've got things like you've got rice, which is the basic thing, rice or okayu, same thing as previously. Um, a miso soup and also uh, different kinds of dinner rolls, bread. I mean, this one, they say it's like a croissant and raisin bread and maybe a chocolate Danish. But what's interesting is they also have uh, a teppanyaki grill, grilling some grilling steak right? Morning steak, morning eggs. And this one's interesting. It's actually daikon mochi. So it's some sort of like cake, like a mochi cake. Again, they're, they're highlighting it on the top of the web page here because it is kind of unusual. It's basically a kind of a rice cake almost that's on a grill with, with shredded daikon, which is a kind of like a root vegetable. But more interesting about this, it actually breaks down all the okazu. Okazu is like a side dish to be eaten with rice. And they've got, this is uh, like squares of egg, um, um, this one here is called Mimono, but it's with um, uh, fiddleheads. Over here you have one that's a burdock salad with carrot, which is quite tasty. And then there's like some uh, boiled vegetables, like so lotus root, chicken, carrot, snow peas, taro. This one is yakibu. And this is a bit unusual. It's almost hard to explain. It's very common in buffets and salad buffets. It's like a wheat protein that's been boiled in soup. So it comes out almost like Mm, how can I explain? It, it has a meaty kind of feel to it, almost like very, very marinated pork, but it doesn't taste like it. It's a little bit bland, but it's something to worth trying. Then they have hot sockeye salmon right here. We've got some pickles. Here we've got mentaiko. Now mentaiko is spiced pollock roe. And again, why would anybody eat that? Well, you got to understand it's not meant to, you're not going to take a bowl of spiced pollock roe or caviar and eat it by itself, but it's there to add flavor to your rice, to the bland white rice. So that's something Something that it just it's like a side dish just to add to that um, also natto again that's a very popular dish for people in the Kanto area that's a fermented rice dish um, it has the consistency of melted marshmallows but it is savory this is an onsen tamago so it's basically a soft-boiled egg and then various vegetable salads so we've got uh, we've got some potato salad we've got lettuce we've got little little small tomato and some broccoli and sausages and ham uh, bacon and boiled le uh, spinach and and we've got some uh, chicken balls with uh, stuff and then some meatballs with a sweet sour sauce and shumai, the uh, boiled Japanese Chinese dumplings. And at the bottom you've got fruit salad, yogurt, a blueberry and raspberry yogurt. And this thing here is interesting. This is the almond pudding. I guess it's like a Chinese dish. I haven't tried it myself, but it sounds like it might be all right. And also, now last year is a hotel. Um, this is the Hankyu Hotel. This is a hotel from, it's basically in Osaka Station. So this 
this is as big city as you get, but it's basically a place where all the bullet trains Actually, no, that's not true. The bullet trains don't go to Osaka Station. They go to Shin Osaka. But the, a lot of the main train lines stop in Osaka Station. And this is one of the hotels that's basically right above the train station in a place called uh, Umeda. And Umeda is one of the major uh, areas of Osaka. So the south fern is Namba, but the north one is called Umeda. So this is like basically Kyoto's over here, Kobe is over here, Nara's down this way where the famous Deer Park is. And and uh, the airport's down here in Wakayama. So this hotel, again, is trying to sort of, has a couple different options. Now this is their spread of foods, which looks absolutely wonderful. Again, you have the chef making omelets for you. They also seem to offer tempura and tempura soba. That's their big selling point. Again, soba shows up again. They also have this various kind of like things to build a bowl of rice. So like negi toro, which is like onions and raw, sand, raw tuna. And we've got some uni, it looks like there and they have it says here they have salmon and octopus like a mixture of favorite seafood so you can build a breakfast sushi bowl they have a western section and this includes things like pancakes bacon and eggs and uh, different things fruit bowls and different uh, fruit salads and looks like that looks like broccoli which is a bit out of place but uh, basically it comes with omelets boiled eggs french toast uh, corn soup corn soup is a huge thing in breakfast buffets I cannot tell you how many times corn soup is something even the cheapest breakfast buffet uh, will have corn soup and it also has uh, some sort of pudding I think it is like it's a breaded pudding again it's British food I guess scrambled eggs bacon uh, pancakes and curry yes that's right curry for breakfast uh, again it seems to be under the under the note Western food again that's what Japanese people consider Western food and then there's the Japanese style stuff and here you're gonna get things like you know um, amaga sake what is it Oh, I think this is Ashia. I'm not sure. I think it's basically it's some sort of egg dish, you know, like this thing here with the squares of egg. Um, you're going to get like uh, rice with mixed in with the different kinds of vegetables, like a multi-grain rice and uh, tofu dishes. It looks like back here you've got cold tofu and off screen there's probably deep fried tofu and you've got your fish dishes, which looks like here's some mackerel and different things, cold fish. And then you've got probably some dish with some seafood. There's soba here and vegetables vegetables and cabbage rolls and uh, like all kinds of different things that are going to be kind of weird like vegetables different ways to cover vegetables different like this is going to be chestnuts and stuff this is like a nimono which is like a stew and also kind of pickled vegetables looks like down here as well different salads and here you got some side okra and some lotus root and burdock a salad here and that looks like some um it's like a mountain vegetables and something like that i'm not sure exactly what this is and interestingly enough we because this is an Osaka hotel, they have an Osaka corner as well to their buffet. So Osaka style yakisoba and Osaka takoyaki as well. It also has this Osaka style sushi where basically they uh, add, put the sushi in, like on a, on a plate of rice. There's also kind of um, minstrone. Minstrone, minstrone soup, whatever that is, I don't really eat that much. Okay. And of course, you also get things like uh, the baked goods, the grapes, oranges, grapefruit. And of course, this being a fancy, it's only $20, but it's still, it comes with dessert. So it, it comes with a selection of things like different cakes and the shoe cream. And that looks like it's some sort of cheesecake. Interestingly enough, they also have a fresh breakfast as well. Um, and this one has a smaller buffet, uh, just bread, juice, salads, fruits and looks like some cereal here as well but they do make a made to order omelet with ham and uh, some vegetables or if you're more into the Japanese style of things there's some pickled lotus fruit salmon some vegetables an egg and some daikon and if you're Chinese this is interesting it comes with um, oolong tea uh, some some dumplings and like I I don't know what that is it's some sort of it looks like some sort of Chinese rice maybe but it comes with a half buffet but it's almost the same price as the full buffet so in minestrone soup and vegetables and salad and juice and bread but if this is I guess if you're like a Chinese visitor or someone like grandpa who doesn't want to try all these Western foods anyway it's a good option but this is what you'll get at a fairly mid-range hotel of course the sky is the limit uh, when you go to the high-end hotels especially on Sunday because the Sunday brunch is still a big thing in Japan but I hope that gives you an idea of what to expect when you do go for breakfast you won't be frightened like I was 
breakfast the first time I had breakfast at a, ho a hotel in Japan. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed that. Sayonara.